नमो तस्सा भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धसा नमो तस्सा भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धसा नमो तस्सा भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धसा गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अनदर कामज रूपा रूपा मेड आउट ऑफ कर्मा दैट इज चक्कू पसादा Mm-hmm. eye sensitivity there will be lots of uh, contradictions with the modern day findings but anyway we'll move into how to ex- how to understand uh move to uh understand the explanations given in within the tradition if you remember we throughout the last few weeks we weekends we discussed about uh, how a kamma is producing kamaj rupas the real cause is it's been affected by craving a karma which has been affected by craving produces karma rupa according to the craving it's it's like satisfying the desire of the person but actually not always that every desire is satisfied uh, the level of the karma also matters in this regard uh, but uh, the main reason for someone to be born to someone to gain new nama and rupa is the uneradicated craving that he or she possesses mm. in the same way uh, when we look into the uh, definitions given on chakku pasada i sensitivity we translate is it's very clear the tradition claims that it is an outcome of the craving a kamma affected by craving mm. when we go into the definition we'll be able to understand this then we also occasions in which we may pay attention on occasions in which uh, chakku beans may uh, not possess or obtain chakku pasada in sansara uh, and also uh, how uh, the physical uh, location and also uh, the functioning of chakku pasada uh, within the tradition that will also be explained today so today our topic is uh, चक्कू पसाद आई सेंसीटिविटी आई सेंसीटिविटी वी शैल बी फोकसिंग ऑन द डेफिनेशन देन इट्स फिजिकल फिजिकल लोकेशन एंड एंड फंक्शन uh then uh how someone may lack lacking or chakku pasada so these are the uh highlights of today's lecture the definition is i, I i'm very sorry i couldn't give a handout today <laughs> uh so definition for chakku pasada is दट्टु कामता निदान काम समुत्थान भूत प्रसाद लखन दट्टु कामता निदान काम समुत्थान भूत प्रसाद This is the definition of chakku pasada. Chakku pasada is the eye sensitivity we call. It is sort of a shine in the eye. It allows the images of uh, rupas, images of the color, to appear upon it. It facilitates like a like a mirror. Um, when since the mirror is has a shining surface, anything that is brought in front of it, the images would appear on it. so likewise chakku pasada is certain kind of a is a is a kind of a uh, shining shining is shining surface a, a smooth surface so that's called pasada pasada the simile is given on a mirror hmm? about a mirror as the surface of a mirror is quite shining 
it allows the images of the objects to appear upon it. So likewise, Chakupasada is also a sort of a shining found in Kalapas. Kalapas we know constitute of eight matter, Patavi, Apo, Tejo, Vayo, Vanna, Ganda, Rasa and Oja. These are the eight matter in every Kalapa. Since it is produced by Karma, Chakupasada is a Kamaja matter, it appears in a Kalapa together with Jivitendriya. Jivitendriya. Then it contains Chakupasada, CP. Due to Chakupasada, this Kalapa is shining. Shining means it has a very uh, bright, bright means a surface like a mirror. So it allows the images of the objects to appear upon it. That shining nature is called Pasada. Bhuta Pasada means, Bhuta here refers to Mahabhuta. The shining of Mahabhuta. Bhuta Pasada. But actually, though we translate roughly as the shining of Mahabhuta, the real translation should be shining or the shining surface, like the quality, depending on Mahabhuta. If you say, if you translate or if you define this based on the genitive case, what happens is, Chakku Pasada loses his identity as an ultimate reality. Ultimate reality means something that exists by itself. It needs the support of conditions, but it has its own identical, it has own unique existence. It is a reality. Reality is not a sub-quality or a sub-characteristic of another reality. When, you, when we discuss, when we say, when we talk about uh, lahuta muduta kamanyata, the lightness of matter, adaptability of matter, these are sub-qualities of great bhuta, great elements. They don't have an independent existence. But when we talk about vanna, color, color is a reality depending on Mahabhuta. It's not a part of Mahabhuta. It's not a quality of Mahabhuta. Therefore, if we translate this in the genitive sense, shining of Mahabhuta, what happens is, Chakupasada loses his identity as a reality. Therefore, the correct translation is, the shining, the, I'm not able to say it in proper way, like the shining surface, shining nature, the, shi the, the shining quality, depending on Mahabhuta. So it's a reality depending on the uh, great four elements, four great elements. That is how we define this term, Bhuta Pasada. Bhuta Pasada. It's a sensitivity upon, depending on Mahabhutas. Then Samuttana. Kamma Samuttana. Produced by Kamma. It's a reality. So Pasada means the reality, the sensitivity depending on Mahabhuta, which has been produced by Kamma, right, Kamma, what sort of Kamma? Dattu Kama Ta Nidana, Dattu Kama Ta Nidana. The origin of this Karma is the desire to look upon something. It doesn't mean that this Kamma was produced by such a desire. It means this Kamma is affected by such desire. We know that Tanha and Avijja are the reasons why a certain Karma, a Chetana, becomes a Karma. If Avijja and Tanha are not affecting, this Chetana is infertile, it's not fertile, it cannot produce a new result, a future result. Therefore, Chetana which becomes a Kamma has Tanha as its origin, has Avijja as its origin. Therefore, this uh, Dattu Kamata, Dattu means to see. Dattung is Pasitung, Dattung. Dattu Kama means the desire to 
That to kamo means the desire. One who is desire to look. That to kamata is the desire. Desire to see objects. Now this kamma has been explained by this clause. That to kamata nidana kamma. A kamma that is that has the origin that has been originated or that has been affected by the craving to see. And this pasada, the sensitivity, is produced by such a karma. And that sensitivity is, or is also depending on Mahabhuta. Therefore, this sentence, the definition explains almost everything about the sensitivity. Eye sensitivity depends upon great elements. And those great elements, it's not the pasada we are talking, those great elements are produced it doesn't say that the sensitive is produced, first produced. The great elements were produced by a karma affected by the desire to see. And these great elements are together with a certain sensitivity. They produce or they become the cause, they become a support for this sensitivity to exist. This definition shows that in the end, Chakupasa, the eye sensitivity is produced by a karma that is affected by the desire to see. So this is how we get this fundamental. Theravadians, we understand the fundamental or fetch the fundamental that craving is the reason for Kamajarupas. Kamajarupas are produced by a certain craving to see, to smell, to hear, sexual desire. So all these cravings are responsible for the Kamajrupas in Sansara. Mm? So the definition shows us, gives us a very clear picture about what it is, what the Chakupasada is. A small, ex a normal explanation about Chakupasada is, now if this is the eye sensitivity, for example, and if this is the Rupa, Eye sensitivity causes the image to appear. Sorry, uh, the rupa eye sensitivity, sen eye sensitivity is sensitive to the rupa color. Color causes a certain image to appear on this sensitivity. Then, this sensitivity also facilitates the arising of consciousness. We call chakku vinyana CV. The sensitivity is CP, Chakku Pasada. And the visible object is Vanna, VN. Mm. Eye sensitivity facilitates, allows the images of color to appear upon it, on it, and facilitates the arising of the eye consciousness, which is in reality we call, which we call seeing. Eye sensitivity itself is seen. Some monks are of the opinion that when these three come together, eye sensitivity, color and uh, eye consciousness, the gathering of all these three is seeing. Some of this opinion. This is not according, this is against the Theravada teachings. Theravadians explain eye consciousness itself is seeing. Seeing is not a gathering of three things. Seeing itself is eye consciousness. For the eye consciousness to happen, there should be conditions. What are the conditions? Color should be there. Eye sensitivity should be under good condition. And there should be light to facilitate this striking. There should be light. And also, there has to have an adverting consciousness before it. And eye consciousness arises together with Chetasika. So if you go in detail, we may find various kinds, lots of conditions for the eye consciousness to happen. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we have to keep in mind, according to the Theravada teachings, seeing is not the gathering of three things, which some call eye consciousness, eye sensitivity and color. Seeing is eye consciousness only. Eye consciousness cannot happen without eye sensitivity or, or color. That's a different case. Right? So, different case. Now, that is uh, the definition of 
eye sensitivity. So the definition itself explains its origin and it, it depends upon the great Mohabhutas and its function is it is sensitive to the color and the color causes a certain image to appear on it and due to the striking eye consciousness arises depending on the eye sensitivity. So eye sensitivity have two functions. It strikes against the color. At the same time, it becomes a dependence for the eye consciousness. Eye consciousness is a dependent, the one who depends. Eye sensitivity is a dependence. Is a dependence. And it is sensitive to the color as well. The, the striking, now we come to the striking. According to ancient commentaries and also the Pali commentaries, the Theravadians unanimously agree upon the fact that color doesn't come and strike at the eye sensitivity. Scientifically, the theory is different. Scientifically, the objects doesn't have a color. Color is a secondary thing that appears in our mind, in our brains, right? The objects do not possess any color. Light strikes on them and they, uh, they comes to our eye. And these surfaces, the hard surfaces, absorb certain, because it's a, a spectrum, right? Color is, a, uh, light is a spectrum. So there are seven types of colors starting from, I think, red till purple, if I remember. Uh, there are, ne? right, indigo and all these are there. Maybe something bluish and reddish, right? That's why we call the blue shift and the red shift regard uh, when, when the uh, light is coming from the stars. Uh, so within this spectrum, gathering of all these, color is a, is a sort of a uh, frequency of the uh, electromagnetic waves. It's a frequency. Electric ma electromagnetic waves have a huge range starting from gamma, if I remember, going till another uh, thing. Gamma is the uh, biggest wavelength, if I remember. So the light is, visible light is within a certain spectrum, certain range. What happens is surfaces absorb certain colors. What is not being absorbed is, is being seen through our eye and our brain. So color is a secondary thing according to, the, according to science. But uh, I, we discussed this when we were talking, uh, uh, when we were doing the lectures on color. Mm. But according to Theravada teachings, color is an inbuilt quality within the object. Color is found in the object. It's not, a, it's not how an object is being seen due to light. So there's a huge uh, difference about these two explanations. Now, now eye sensitivity, this, this the same problem comes when we are explaining the eye sensitivity. According to the Theravada teachings, the color is found in the, within the object and it causes an image to appear within the eye sense, upon the eye, on the eye sensitivity. Eye sensitivity appears in a kalapa. So if we draw it in a, another angle, if this is the kalapa and if we say this is eye sensitivity, the, the shining nature in ash color, object appears here. Like an object appears on the mirror. Hmm. And this object, which has been far away, doesn't come and strike. The light facilitates. Light, in between light facilitates this striking. This striking is called asampatta. Asampatta means it's not necessary the object has to come and strike on the sensitivity. It causes an image to appear on the sensitivity. Scientifically, it's the light coming and striking at the sensitive part of the eye. Hmm. Then, so the object while being there in its original location causes an image to appear on this. The Theravada book says, now when this 
color strikes at the sensitivity, this sensitivity comes into a physical change. It's a physical change. For instance, we put some, uh, how do you call it, candle, uh, iti iti. Uh, clay, sort of a clay. When we burn the candles, we get the clay, sort of. You keep them and you put a, a certain paper on it in which there are letters being carved and you smash it with a seal, what happens? The letters would appear on it, right? Letters would appear on it. At the ancient days, uh, some seals were made like that, especially in letters, right? Then you know it has been already sealed. Mm? Uh, so like uh, sometimes we can use lead for this. If you put uh, uh, a heated uh, metal, uh, sort of uh, metal is being heated like a, like, a, like a paste and you keep something on it and make a seal the marks of the surface will appear there hmm? so likewise and also if you remember the cameras that were used in 90s in cameras there's a negative right in, there's a negative negative means there's a reel so when it is exposed to the color the reel burns, right? Reel burns. So you can see in the negative, you can see the pictures and it'll be, it is taken into a colorful photo. Mm -hmm. So likewise, when a certain object strikes at the eye sensitivity, a physical change appears in it. For example, if these are the surfaces, uh, background, a physical change appears in it, like a negative that has been burnt in a camera then that eye sensitivity is not sensitive to any other new color. Once it has been uh, struck by a color, there's a physical change. It may be a, it may be a, uh, a recent uh, co supportive cause for the eye consciousness to happen, but it is not sensitive to another color. So there's a physical change going on. Hmm? This physical change causes the bhavanga to vibrate, this striking. Then the consciousness, the conscious stream starts to give attention towards the new object. So that's how it has been explained within the teachings. So this is a physical, this is the functioning, physical function. Regarding the location, there's a big problem. So I don't know how to, how to cope this. If you look from the traditional point of view, it seems like this explanation seems like there's a huge blunder. Hmm? Why is it? We know that the sensitive part of the eye, right? The sensitive part, these are the uh, nerves that go to the brain, right? So the sensitive part is here the, at the back of the eye. If you draw it, in the in another angle so these are the nerves so these are the sensitive part right if you, if you look from the front angle hmm? forget about the lens and everything the back of the eye back of the eye i'm talking about this area right though it seems like uh, the huge part is going for the nerve actually uh, it is located in a not at the center, but uh, in some place. So, yeah, this area is sensitive, except the nerve. Hmm? But according to the teachings, uh, what we find in the commentarial books, eye sensitivity is located, if you take this is the black color ball, uh, the pupil, right? So within the pupil, eh, if I'm correct, so within the pupil, there are, there is a small, uh, small particle-like shape in the, in the black, uh, within the pupil, right? So it's, you can see, if this is the eye, 
you can see something like this, right? So, I sensitivity is said to be this. I sensitivity is said to be this. We know that clearly this cannot be the eye sensitivity. The sensitive part is at the back of the eye. According to the commentaries, eye sensitivity is located within the pupil. Right, so this is a I don't know how, uh, maybe they were ob just observing the physical life from outside, or maybe that was the uh, medical understanding those days. Hmm? Yeah? Optical. Optically? Yeah, that's, maybe that's, that's how they observed, right? There was no such advancement in uh, medical science. I'm not looking down on the tradition, but it seems it's very, very strange. We know that the sensitive nerves are at the back of the eye. When I was studying Abhidhamma for the first time as a, as a boy, I myself thought, okay, they are talking about this back sensitivity at the back of the eye. But when you, when you give close attention to what the book says, it's talking about the dark bubble-like uh, particle which is located in the pupil hmm. and the size is also given. It's like the head of a leech on the head, like uh, the one who sucked the blood, we call leech, right? Not the leech means, uh, no, sorry, I'm <laughs> sorry about the names, not the leech, leech is the one who sucked blood, right? Uh, some people, uh, ticks, yeah, ticks in the, on the head. So, at the head of a tick, the size of the head of a tick. If you look into the inside your pupil, we see a certain uh, circle like shape. So, this is the eye sensitivity that the tradition is talking about. And this, peop this ball, the, uh, the book says, for example, if you look from this angle, has seven layers, right, and these eye sensitivity is spread like oil in a cotton. If you put oil in a cotton, it spreads all over the cotton. So likewise, in this physical uh, ball, eye sensitivity, this eye chakku dasaka kalapas, like the rupa kalapas, together with eye sensitivity, are spread all over this particle, hmm? physical thing. So that's a, uh, problem. Uh, I don't know how to explain this uh, because it seems like uh, there is something, to me, I feel it's something wrong to be true because this cannot be the sensitive part. Sensitive part has to be behind the eye, hmm? Be the wall. Yes. Because we scientifically know, we clearly know that the images appear here. Hmm? Scientifically, we know that. Because this can be, this part is the lens. This lens, for example, adjusts, adjusts the size, it, it goes up, it becomes, uh, dilates and it expands due to the color, or the, the brightness of the eye, uh, light and all so forth, right? It seems like it is. It is the lens. Maybe I'm, I'm uh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I'm, I may not be perfectly explaining what the what the science is. But we clearly know the sensitive part is at the back of the eye, while the lens is in the front. So this is the problem of the location of the eye sensitivity. Function is eye sensitivity is sensitive to the color. It strikes at the eye sensitivity and a physical change appears. And there's another huge problem regarding this uh, tradition, about this traditional explanation. Now, now if you think now this is the location where eye sensitivities are located. So in part Rupa Kalapas are there. Rupa 
Rupa Kalapas are there. If you zoom it, for example, one Kalapa. Hmm. Now think, we are seeing a certain image in front of us. We are not seeing, just seeing one Rupa. We are seeing a spe like a range, right? We are seeing a certain realm within ourselves, in front of us. Now if you just close, because we are seeing from both eyes, if you just close one eye, still we see a certain range. The, tra the book says, the traditional book says, now this one Kalapa, one Kalapa, it's not mentioned in the commentaries, but the late Abhidhamma books. Now think there were five trees in front of us. All five trees will appear on each Kalapa. And if there is now the, the next Kalapa, for example, this Kalapa also will be sensitive to all five. So if there are millions of Kalapas in the surface, all are getting all the images. Now think like small glasses in which all the images are appearing. Right? Exactly all the images in front of us are appearing in every Kalapa. So what happens is, eye consciousness appears I consciousness, E, C, Chakku Vijnana, sorry, Chakku Vijnana, C, V, for example. Chakku Vijnana appears on a one Kalapa, not on others. So, it depends on just one Kalapa and sees the entire picture. Why is that? All the entire picture is appearing on a single Kalapa. Right? Is in appearing in a single Kalapa. The question comes, why, how could a, such a small Kalapa take all the images? That's the nature of a mirror, right? A small mirror can take a huge range, which is bigger than that. Because the images go, can go, can appear. That's the nature of a surface. Some small mirrors, if you take them far away, you can see a huge spectrum, right? Range within that. So likewise, it's not a huge problem. So even the Kalapa is very small, all the images appear in them. The thing is, each and every Kalapa gets a similar image. There can be slight differences due to the angle, but they get a similar image upon them. The eye consciousness sees it. Other color, eye consciousness arise only, only on one Kalapa. Right? This is not the problem. Problem comes with the blind spot. I don't know whether, more. I think most of you are aware of this blind spot. Everyone has a blind spot. If you keep your one eye closed and if you are looking at some direction, if you take this to a, some, uh, in a certain range, at a one spot you see, you are not seeing the tip. It becomes completely dark. This is called the blind spot. Scientifically it's been explained. Why is that? The sensitivity is in a, in a certain range, back of the eye. Scientifically what they explain is, now this is the back of the eye, for instance, this is the blind spot. The entire image in front of us appears on this entire surface. Since this is the uh, output of the nerves gathering, there is no sensitive part in that location, right? So images do not appear on the blind spot. Therefore, we see in our vision, we are always missing one spot. This has been scientific, not nothing to say about scientifically proven. We, we see it, we practically we experience it. Anyone who has done this experiment knows there is a blind spot, right? There is a place that you cannot see that you don't see. In both eyes we have it, but the thing is, the nature of the brain or the body is that it seems like it appears to us as we are seeing everything in front of us. But if you investigate, there are two spots that we are not seeing. Hmm? We are not seeing. So what happens is, now think, the problem is, according to the teachings, all the images appear in a one Kalapa. 
So when we experience the blind, we do experience the blind spot. It's not a theory. It's a practical thing. It's an obvious thing to us. So how do we explain the blind spot? Blind spot is not that we are not seeing the entire thing. We do see a, a certain <laughs> range within our sight. One spot is blank. What does this mean? If you explain it based on the Theravada explanations, every kalapa should contain a blind spot. Every kalapa should contain a blind spot which hinders the sight. Right? Why do we get this kind of a view in, a, in which one spot is blank, all the other parts can be seen? The reason is the image is not appearing. It's not like images are appearing in every kalapa. The entire image is appearing in a surface. Within the surface, there is a one spot that is missing. That's the only way we can explain this. So therefore, what the tradition says about the kalapa, about the function of this kalapa, the location of this kalapa, is highly controversial. It's highly controversial. I'm not bringing down the faith on the Theravada. This is the problem. These are the problems. If you go into Anapanasati, the breathing, the book clearly says the breath comes from your stomach. We know that no breath whatsoever goes into stomach. It all goes into the lungs. Why the stomach is expanding? In order to give space for the lungs to expand. It's not that the air is going to the, lung, going to the stomach. The reason seems like, uh, the reason to my understanding seems like that was the medical knowledge that they had on those eras. Based on this knowledge, they tried to explain the functions of the body. Mm -hmm. That's why it seems the eye sensitivity, the location of the eye sensitivity is given in the pupil instead of the back of the eye, which called ret retina, not the retina, the word comes, okay, retina. It's on the pupil, in the pupil, according to the teachings, the teachings in the Theravada tradition. And also, every kalapa gets the entire image in front of us. Since if you, if you have two TVs, every kalapa, within every kalapa, you can see two TVs. But eye consciousness arises in one, so we see through that. This explanation cannot give a clear, uh, clear, uh, this explanation cannot explain us why there is a blind spot. Mm? But scientifically, perfectly, you can explain this, why there is a blind spot. Because on that location where the nerves have gathered, which takes the signals to the brain, uh, doesn't have a shining, there is not, is not sensitive to the color. The entire surface of the retina is, is sensitive. Okay, so these are that's why I started the lecture saying that there's a huge problem about how the sense eye sensitivity has been explained. This can be found uh, about other sensitivities as well. If you go deeper into the explanations, you may find there are huge contradictions to the modern findings. Anyway, then. Uh, I'll move on to explain some theoretical aspects. Uh, a kalapa, eye sensitivity is located in a kalapa which contains eight uh, inseparable matter, jivitindriya and chakku pasada. This is called chakku dasaka kalapa. Chakku dasaka kalapa. Its generation is called Chakku Santati. Called Chakku Santati. There are two Chakku Santatis going on both sides, but both are produced by the same karma. It's not that one eye is produced by one sensitivity is produced by one karma, left eye by another, while right eye by another. No. 
both are produced by the same karma. Like if you remember the bhava santati located in the entire body is produced by one single karma, right? So like, like eye sensitivity in both eyes are produced by the same karma. Mm -hmm. That karma is not necessary to be the karma that gave the patisandhi. It can be a something different. Then there are a few occasions in which uh, eye sensitivity, one may lack the eye sensitivity as we explained for the bhava rupas. If someone attains the asanya satta by suppressing the attachment towards uh, consciousness, so he may not get eye consciousness. If he is not getting eye conscious, there is no necessity of eye sensitivity. Therefore, a person born in the asanya satta realm doesn't get eye sensitivity according to the doctrine of necessity. Right? According to the doctrine of necessity. Because why one gets eye sensitivity? Because one has the craving to see objects. In order to fulfill this uh, desire, there should be the uh, consciousness just cannot see the physical objects by itself. It has to have a mediator who brings in the images into our within our this unit of the life so that ha that is a rupa which is sensitive to the color and that is the eye sensitivity the karma which uh, facilitates this seeing has to produce this eye sensitivity since one one suppresses the desire to consciousness he also suppresses the desire to see because seeing is a consciousness Eventually, he may not get a consciousness within the, the, during the entire life of Asanya Satta. So, there is no necessity of a eye sensitivity during that life. So, in Asanya Satta, one does not get eye sensitivity. In the Arupa realm, one, after, after someone has suppressed the desire to the Rupa, the person obtains a life with only matter, with only, with only consciousness, only Nama mentalities so there is no rupa in the realm when there is no rupa there is no possibility of eye, con eye sensitivity hmm? there is no possibility of eye sensitivity uh, then uh, because the patisandhi consciousness the patisandhi karma doesn't produce uh, matter so when there is no matter produced at the birth at the moment of patisandhi there is no possibility of a lineage of ka rupas. Mm? So, it's utterly important one has to get rupa at the moment of patisandhi in order to obtain a rupa. Mm? That we shall re discuss in the Chitta Rupas lesson. Mm? Then, one, one who is born in the Brahma realm, he suppresses the desires, the sensual desires. So, sensual desire also includes the desire to see objects. Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. But these two faculties, eye and ear, seeing and hearing, do facilitate some wholesome, wholesome qualities as well. Now think about the smell, smelling, tasting and touching. We are not doing any good karmas through these doors, right? right? Smelling is just for your pleasure. You're not giving anything to someone. Uh, tasting is for our own pleasure. Touching is also for our own pleasure, mainly. But with seeing, we may see good people and associate them. Through hearing, we may listen to good dharma. Mm? So these two faculties are facilitating wholesome deeds. Another reason is a Brahma who has suppressed the sensual pleasures still have a desire to communicate with other Brahmas. They still have that desire because they haven't suppressed the, uh, the craving for the rupa completely. They do att attach with the things that they see and so forth in the Brahma realm. Especially they have a desire to communicate. So they do get these sensitivities, eye and ear. Hmm? They don't possess uh, nose, tongue and body sensitivity. That is not to say that they don't have a nose. <laughs> right? Brahmas do have a nose. <laughs> do have a tongue, do have a body, but their sensitivities are missing. They don't possess the sensitivity. Uh, then in the karma realm, 
Sometimes we may, one may not possess Chakku Pasada due to being born out of a weaker karma. Dvihetuka Aumaka, a weaker karma. Weaker karma means a karma that is done without the understanding about the karma and vipaka, the results, karma and its results, and also with evil like like mean desires in order to be popular in order to in order to overcome others sometimes we do merits like, like with such intentions these are weaker karmas and so if such a weaker karma was done without any understanding about the karma and its vipaka this is called extremely weak wholesome deed if someone is born with such an extremely weak wholesome deed there's a high possibility that he may not possess the eye, eye sensitivity by birth. There is a high possibility that he may not possess eye sensitivity by birth. And also a person who is born with a good karma, sometimes another karma may hinder, obstruct the rising of his eye sensitivity. There is a possibility also. It may hinder. A person with born with a good karma, another akusala karma may hinder. In the, in the unwholesome realms, woeful realms, Due to the nature of the Akusala Kamma that is born with or due to the influence of another karma, one may lose the eye sensitivity by birth. While living as it happened to Venerable Chakupala, due to a past karma, one may lose the sight, the eye sensitivities may be burnt or will, be, will, will vanish, the rising may stop. Or it also can be that due, not due to any, any special karma, due to the cruelty of someone, due to our negligence, Someone desires to crush his eye, he, he, just, he just crushes it. It's not necessary that he has a karma for that. It can happen due to his own negligence or ignorance. Due to the cruelty of someone, due to the weather conditions, due to being negligent and exposed to fire and all this, so one can lose the eye sensitivity, even without having a bad akusala karma to lose it. So there are many ways that the eye sensitivity we may lack. So in the Asanya Sattva, one doesn't possess eye sensitivity. Arupa realm, no, due to there is no Rupa. And in the Kama realm, due to born with a weaker karma or being obstructed by an Akusala karma, one may lack the eye sensitivity. And also in the unwholesome realm, overfull realms, one, due to the nature of the karma they are born with or due to the influence of another karma, one may not possess eye sensitivity by birth. During the lifespan, also, due to various regions, reasons, past karmas or present karmas or our own negligence due to the cruelty of others, due to weather conditions, one may lose this eye sensitivity. There is a possibility. Right? So these are the things that I would like to talk today. I am um, very sorry I couldn't give you a uh, handout. I have covered, uh, I think, everything. So we talked about uh, the function the definition shows that eye sensitivity is produced by the is caused by the craving it's, it's a product of karma affected by the craving to see and its function is it is sensitive to the color and it is it, it is the dependence for the eye consciousness it facilitates the rising of eye consciousness on it on it then uh, uh, it appears in a cluster of rupas uh, a cluster which contains 10 including the eye sensitivity and it is sort of a shining surface we call uh, due to the eye sensitivity the kalapa gets a shining that's why the images could appear on it mm. then we moved on to explain its location according to the tradition it's located in the pupil in the within the in the pupil and and all the images in front of eye sensitivities and in a pupil in a in a uh, ball like particle and it is eye sensitivity are spread kalapas are spread all over it like oil on a uh, wool cotton a piece of cotton then uh, this uh, area contains lots of eye sensitivities and lots of rupas appear on them many rupas appear on them and this clearly contradicts with the and eye, eye consciousness appears on a one kalapa only this really contradicts with the experience that we get about the blind spot hmm? about the blind spot and according to theravada teachings when a color
clashes at the eye sensitivity, a physical uh, change occurs in it. It's sort of like burnt. Burnt means there's a physical change that causes the bhavanga concentration, consciousness to vibrate. Uh, yeah. Then chakku dasaka kalapas. Uh, their, their generation is called Chakku Santati. We do possess two types of Santatis in two eyes, but both are produced by the same karma. And there are a few occasions in which beings may not possess uh, eye sensitivity in Sansara, in Dasanya Satta, in Darupa realm, sometimes in the Karma realm as well. Mm, and also while we are living, some may lose the eye sensitivity. Mm. So uh, the take, take away message is now according to the teachings. Eye sensitivity is produced by a karma. Therefore, our ability to see is not something best owned upon us by God. It's not something that we spontaneously gain. It's, it's produced by our karma. And that karma is affected by a craving to see. Eventually, craving is the creator. Craving is the one who gives all these to our lives, <laughs> right? We are born due to craving and we get the senses uh, due to the craving. So when we are seeing certain objects, what we have to understand is eye consciousness is appearing, uh, arising based on eye, eye sensitivity, which was sensitive to the color. So it's a, there's a dependent origination here, cause and effect. And it's not my seeing or it's not I am seeing, just seeing or happens, occurs, eye consciousness occurs or arises depending on conditions. They are eye sensitivity, color and light. So when we keep on contemplating likewise, we just give attention to the eye sensitivity, eye consciousness and color separately, the idea of self would dissolve. Because the matter and the nama, material, uh, mentality, has to be separated with our wisdom. If we can understand that the uh, material part is sensitive to the eye, but consciousness is seeing this. So it shows, it gives us the idea that there is no self here. Only non-self elements are happening due to causes. So that would lead to our understanding. Yes, I would conclude the lecture. I hope you got some new insight with this and give you the chance to ask questions. Oh, sir, uh, may I ask my question? Yes. Uh, first of, uh, first before asking my question, uh, may I say that uh, that uh, sect is called Laos. That blood sucking sect is called Laos. Laos. Okay, right. Thank you. Thank uh, you. So, okay. And the chloroform is lice. Lice. Ah, okay, right. Lice. Not leech. Okay. Right, uh, lice. Uh, okay. Uh, my question is uh, now eye sensitivity is taken as a concretely produced matter. Nippon uh can you explain about that uh, uh now it, it it is dependent on uh red essentials uh how it, it taken as a yeah, concretely concrete. produced yes so concretely produced matter means directly produced by karma every reality that is produced by whatever cause has a dependence so dependence means uh, when you study Patana, you get to know that uh, every reality, conditioned, conditioned reality, has to have a dependence, Nisse Pachya. No reality can exist independently without the support of others. But still I said they have an independent existence. That means what I meant was uh, they are not sub-characteristics of a certain reality. They have their own independent existence, but in reality they do depend, they get the support of others. Gaining the support is a different thing. Having an individual existence is a different thing. Therefore, eye sensitivity, uh, for, for instance, we talk about, if we talk about the Mahabhutas, all of them are interdependent on each other, mutually depending on each other. Uh, uh, therefore, uh, even the eye sensitivity depends on great Mahabhutas, but it is produced by the karma. The entire Kalapa is produced by the karma. When we study uh, the lightness, adaptability, Lahuta, Muduta, Kamanyata, 
uh, softness, lightness and adaptability. Uh, regarding now these rupas are sub characteristics of the great Mahabhuta. Rupasalahuta, lightness of rupa. It is not the lightness that depends on rupa. Therefore, when we give the definition in genitive case, when you give the defin definition in genitive case, it indicates that the reality does not have an independent existence. It is a sub characteristic of another reality. Therefore, these lightness, softness and adaptability, lahuta, muduta, kamanyata are not considered as ultimate realities. In Theravada teachings, we have only 18 rupas actually. The last 10 anipana rupas are not realities. They are related to the re realities, but they are not real realities. Therefore, when we count the realities, Paramatta Dhammas, we get only 72 actually. We get only 72. But there is another uh, explanation about the when, uh, Chetasikas. We can also reduce them into 45 according to some commentators, uh, sub commentators. That is a different case. I will touch on upon that in the mentality lectures. Uh, so, depending on does not negate its in independent existence. Independent means uh, it, it has its own uh, existence as a separate reality. So, Chakku Pasada, though it depends on Mahabhuta, like any other Rupa, every Rupa is depending on something. Kala is depending on Mahabhuta. Chakku Pasada is depending on Mahabhuta. Patavi is depending on the remaining three Mahabhutas. The dependent does not negate Dependence de does not negate the, uh, its uh, identity as a separate element. So, concretely produced matter are directly produced by, uh, by these any of the four conditions. But if any reality is a sub characteristic like the adaptability, lightness and softness or the intimations, vinyati, intimations are also sub characteristics of great Mahabhutas. Bodily intimation is a sub characteristic of Vayo Dhatu. Verbal intimation, Vachi Vinyat is sub characteristic of Patavi Dhatu according to the commentaries, according to Paramatha Deepani is a sub characteristic of all the Mahabhutas. So, uh, if something is a sub characteristic, it is not a reality, it is not con concretely produced. That would be the explanation. Yeah. Very clear. Uh, thank you. Uh, that uh, Laos is calling Fali Uka. Is it Uka, correct? Uka, yes. I have read uh, somewhere Uka, Uka Mangula Garbolika. Yes, yes, Uka. In Sinhali is Ukuna. Yes, Uka. Yeah. Comes, yes. It's come from Uka. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Read, read it out. Yeah, please read out. Sorry, gathering? Uh, is the gathering of the tree. Gathering? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So it's it's then those three uh, okay, it's another good question because according to the Buddha's teachings, Tinnan Sangati Passo, Chakkuncha Paticha Rupecha Upajati Chakku Vinyanan, Tinnan Sangati Passo. Yeah, thank you for that question. The statement is given in the Sutra, uh, Chakkuncha. Paticca Rupecha Upajati Chakku Vinyana Tinnan Sangati Passo The translation would be Due to chakku, eye and color, there arises eye consciousness. Chakku, rupa, arises chakku inyana. Tinnan sangati, gathering of three. Gathering of these three is called pasa, the contact. 
we take this as the I, I sensitivity, Chakku Pasada, CP, color, one na VN, strikes at it, go for, to an, for a different color, the image appears, and as a recall, Chakku Inyana, Chakku Inyana. Seems like the statement indicates that this gathering of these three is the Passa. It's when we come in, when we explain a reality, there are four ways in Theravada teaching that we can explain it. A single reality can be explained in four facets, four aspects. Either we directly say it's characteristic, sometimes it's function, sometimes the manifestation, sometimes the proximate cause. Manifestation is how it appears to a yogi who observes this reality. The obvious way it, it appears to us. Manifestation is not the, is not the characteristic. It's not the characteristic. This statement given in the sutra, according to the Theravada explanations, is the manifestation of Passa. That's how it appears to a yogi. Passa, how do we explain Passa in its characteristic? I shall be discussing this in the mentalities lectures. This is the object. This is the Chittu Pada. Uh, I'll just say Chitta. Chitta focuses. Chitta focuses at an object. And there is an image in the Chitta. We call it Chitta Nimitta. This is the Aramana object. Chitta Nimitta. Chitta Nimitta is not a reality. It's how the, the way the consciousness takes the object. Panyati is always a Chitta Nimitta. It's not that every Chitta Nimitta is a Panyati. Sometimes ultimate realities can be taken as ultimate realities. It's called a Paramatta Nimitta. Sometimes it can be a Panyati Nimitta. Aramana is always Paramatta. It's always Paramatta Dhamma. Paramatta, I would call it. Paramatta is a reality. You cannot have a Panyati outside, right? Panyati is always inside. The, it's, it's the way you see the object, you see the world. Panyati is always inside. Then you have a question. Bhante, in, in Aramana, we study Panyatta Aramana, we study a Paramatta Aramana. So, Aramana includes Panyati and Paramatta both. Yes. When we are talking about Aramana in the Theravada teachings, we talk about the actual object and also the image in the mind. Both are considered as Aramana. Both are considered as Aramana. Now think about the idea of a man. It's a Panyati. But you cannot have idea of a man without the realities. There should be Nam and Rupa. Observing a Nam and Rupa, we get the idea of a man. So in the ultimate sense, there is Nam and Rupa. So Aramana, when we say Aramana, though I give emphasis on this, we have to keep in mind, Aramana includes the Chitta Nimitta and also the real object, both. Hmm? In order to make it more clear, much clearer, I would say the real Aramana is here, it's a Paramatta, always the image of the mind. Sometimes the mind takes a Paramatta as a Paramatta, sometimes it takes as a Panyati. Hmm? So now what happens? So we don't distinguish both, both of them. We don't distinguish both of them. We take both as the object. Hmm? Now in case of five aggregates, which are realities, think about you're observing a certain person, five aggregates are there. One consider it, uh, it, it the five aggregates as a human. So object is a panyati. But the actual object are the five aggregates. In a Vipassana Yogi, same five aggregate, he, he or she considers them as five aggregates. So in Vipassana, you are matching the object and the Chitta Nimitta. It doesn't need to be that you are observing it as it is, but at least the basic characteristics. Since these objects are impermanent suffering and non-self, you have to consider them as impermanent non-self and suffering. So 
the chitta nimitta and object are equal they match each other but if we consider this reality as pleasurable while it is a suffering while it begets suffering if we consider it as a uh, pleasurable thing they do not match so we are thinking against the reality so in vipassana what we are doing is we are matching the we are getting a chitta nimitta corresponding to the real object anyway now when the chitta chitta is the focus at a certain object focuses focus means it delimits a certain object separating other objects separate taking it uh, having separated it from other objects for instance if i want to focus on this phone while there are many objects in the world that can be taken at this specific very specific moment my attention is given to this phone only so attention is the chitta the focus is the chitta that's how it explains it is it has been explained in sub commentaries it delimits the object it separate it takes out the object now think about in ice cream uh, uh, a bucket of ice cream you take a scoop scoop only gets a, a certain amount likewise while there are many objects that can be taken we are focusing at a one object or maybe a group of objects doesn't matter i would say it as a one object right so this is the focus the chitta itself is the focus but that focus on alone cannot be productive i call it the doctrine of efficacy the consciousness chittu pada the mental group cluster the mental cl the material cluster rupa kalapas mental cluster sako chittu pada chittu pada has to be effective to some level we call it atta sadaka atta sadaka chittu pada atta sadaka there's no dot sorry without dot hmm? atta sadaka atta sadaka chittu pada means chittu padas that facilitates the existence so what is this atta sadaka what do they facilitate what are the functions they perform there are various ways that atta sadaka can be explained the nature of atta sadaka one is the consciousness the stream is is happening in a way to continue not to stop conscious stream doesn't stop out of a sudden if it stops it's very nice thing then we'll we, we will be attaining nibbana i would i i hope so but <laughs> it doesn't happen it continues even though we wish that it may stop keeps on going so therefore the world is made in a way for the consciousness stream conscious stream to continue how do we prove it uh, within the tradition why is it karma why is it that karma producing nam and rupa why can't it just produce something else producing nam and rupa means it extends the suffering so why did the karma gets the capacity to produce nam and rupa because that is how the world is constructed the world has happened it's not created constructed by anyone else but that's how the laws are functioning so laws are in a have been arranged not arranged been not by someone automatically arranged in a way to continue this sansara so that's why and and if someone asks the question why why a consciousness chitta is observing some why why consciousness has the characteristic of cognition we cannot explain that that's how it is therefore we understand that every mind moment chittu pada is contributing is contributing to this continuation in order to continue in order to continue the main source for continuation is craving for craving to exist to prevail this existence should appear as something pleasurable something pleasant in order to for the existence to appear as pleasurable the consciousness has to be sensitive to this in detail if just just a focus doesn't facilitate this therefore though the chitta focuses at an object there should be some sort of a contact contact means getting closer to the object having a close relationship with the object associating the object closely if there was no such a contact which makes the chitta to associate the object closely 
subtle characteristics of the object would never be known. What are these subtle characteristics I refer to? The taste of the object, the flavor of object, its unique characteristics, its appealing natures. None of this would be appear, none of this would be obvious to the mind if there is no such a close contact. When we clash two hands together, it's just they are just contacting. You cannot show a specific ultimate reality for that. Because just two rupas are contacting each other. It's just an incident, it's just a happening. You cannot show reality. If we are to explain this in ultimate sense, in the ultimate sense, the outer layer, the rupa kalapas of this out, outer layer of this hand and this hand are clashing at each other. There is a ultimate clash. So when these rupa kalapas are clashing with each other, whatever qualities in this hand, maybe the heat or whatever are felt here. So it's an ultimate clash. There's nothing to be shown as a reality that clashes. It's sort of a two rupas that already exist are clashing at each other. So likewise, this object that exists is focused by the consciousness. There is another different element which touches this object, which makes a close contact with the object. Due to this, Due to this contact, the flavor of the object becomes apparent to the mind. A simile is given, you take a ball of orange and you squeeze it, the juice will come out. Squeezing is like the contact. Juice is the flavor, orange is the object. So likewise, when a contact makes a good association, the word has to be used contact, or the, the passa makes a good contact with the object, all the other characteristics of the object become obvious. Sometimes the mind may take it in a wrong way. Sometimes the mind may understand it correctly. Doesn't matter. If there was no such a close association, just focus cannot facilitate all these uh, sub-functions. Therefore, among all the Chetasikas, contact is considered the foremost. That's why in Abhidhammatta Sangha, in Dhamma Sangini, Passa has been explained in the first place. That is the function, that is the characteristic of Passa. But this characteristic is very difficult to be explained. It's difficult to be understood. For some yogis, yes, they may feel it as a contact, like we are getting getting close to the object, we are having a sort of a impact on the object, that is how it is felt in its characteristic. But the most obviously is felt as the gathering of three things, the consciousness, object and the sensitivity. If you open our eyes, the most easiest way to understand that there is a visible object, we are seeing it, we are aware of it and there is an eye that facilitates this happening. So while all three are there, while all three are there, they are in contact with each other. Eye is focusing at the object depending on the eye sensitivity. Now in these three, gathering of these three, sometimes the commentators exclude this eye sensitivity because actual happening happens between the eye consciousness and the color object eye consciousness and the color. In uh, Milinda Panya, the great Tera gives a simile, when two hands are clapping, one is the eye, one is the color, they are clashing is the Passa. The commentators explain this, eye should be known as the eye consciousness. Sometimes uh, when Buddha said one sees with eye, you cannot see with eye, you are seeing with eye consciousness. So likewise, in even the statement given in the Milinda Panya, the teaching, I should be known as the I consciousness, color as the color. So they are gathering, 
when eye consciousness focuses at the color, it makes an impact on the object. Why that impact is necessary? If there is no such an impact, none of the other chetasikas, tasting, flavoring, recognizing, attachment, detachment, none of understanding, none of this is possible. That's why in Brahmajala Buddha, Sutta Buddha said, every ditti is based on contact. Contact is the chetasika which makes a proper in connection with the object. Then connection with the object so the mind, the consciousness could observe it clearly. Clearly doesn't mean that it always sees the object in its actual nature, but it has it can function on this. Chetana can perform its intentions, Sanya can recognize the object, Vedana can flavor the object, taste the object. It's all because there is a good contact. So that contact is an ultimate reality. But the gathering of three is how it manifests to us. It's not an explanation about the characteristic of contact. It's the manifestation. The Theravadians do have a clear explanation about the contact, Passa. And this is how it is being explained. So thank you for your question. Gathering of these three is the manifestation of Passa. Uh, passa. But some in today, in, uh, some, some monks uh, today explain that, these days explain, gathering of all these three is seeing Dasana. That is utterly wrong, not, not according to the, uh, this is against the Theravada teachings. I'm not saying whether it's correct or wrong. According to the Theravada is wrong, right? but ultimately I'm not going to claim what is correct or wrong. It's not a Theravada teaching. Yes, sir, I mean, answer, Hello, let Mr. me ask this question. Yes. Uh, now you have already explained uh, the Chakku Prasad uh, uh, occurs only after Pratisandhi and also uh, it is actually after some time, you know, uh, by learning Vidama, uh, there is a time difference, time gap uh, for the Chakku Prasad to appear. Uh, so, uh, can Chakku Prasad be considered as a result of uh, combination of Janaka Kama and another Kama? Or is it only the, uh, another Kama which causes Chakku Prasad? It's my, uh, really the area which I am not very clear about. Thank you for your question. Actually, one Kalapa or one Kamaja Rupa is produced by one Karma. One, one Santati. Generation of Kamaja Santati are produced by a single Karma. It's not that two kamas come together and produce a one kalapa according to the fundamentals. But there can be now while one kama is producing, another kama may support it and make the chakupasada more brighter or more clearer or more effective. Support, support can be given and also it may obstruct. While the one while one, one kusala kama is producing the chakupasada, a kusala kama may hinder, obstruct it and makes it weaker and have a make the person to have a weaker sight. Uh, but still, if you are talking about who produced this prasada, it has to be a one karma. Then, I suppose you are talking about, uh, you are referring to the Patisandhi Kamma as the Janaka Kamma. Uh, so, yes. some, uh, according to the uh, commentary of Katavattu, uh, there is a possibility that the Patisandhi Kamma can produce all the Kamma Jarupas in one life and also, some Kamajarupa, such as Chakku, Sota, Gana, can be produced by a different Kama. It's also possible. So, it's not possible for us to say whether someone's life, whether someone's Chakku Pasada is produced by the uh, Patisandhi Kama or a different Kama. But it's not, it's not that fundamental that two Kamas come together and produce a one uh, Rupa. Yeah, Venerable Chakupala's case, uh, actually they are, he became blind due to the effect of a different karma, yeah. so it comes as probably Upacheda. Upacheda karma, yes, it's a Upacheda karma. Hmm. Upacheda. Right. Uh, one way to explain is Upapilaka, if it is obstructing the entire life, uh, one sub-commentator say it should be considered Upacheda it, it, because it obstructs, completely stops the functioning of a certain karma. Thank you very much. Teruan Sarnai Swami. Teruan Sarnai. Thank you so much, Ante, for your true lecture and explanation. Much appreciated.
Foundation Su Pande and the supporting team Sao Tu Sao Tu. Another question is based on the fact that all streets, five trees, yeah, all five trees are perceived. Is it safe to assume now that one not include the whole spectrum of colors, not just one color? Of five trees, what do you say? I, I can't hear it. Trees. trees. Uh, yeah, five trees. Ruka. Ruka, Ruka. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Five trees and the simile I yeah, gave, simile. right. Uh, one now includes the entire spectrum. Yeah, whatever we see is color. Whatever we see is color. It's not a particular color. Uh, the definition of one now is the reality that is sensitive to the eye. Reality that is sensitive to the eye. Though it may have different colors, right? Red, red, blue, green and all this. Uh, but... Uh, they are all considered as color. The basic nature, according to Vishuddhi Magga, is uh, the sensitive, uh, the sensitive nature. It's nature of being sensitive to the eye. That's the explanation of color. So whatever we see, regardless of the objects, is color. And that color itself is not a person. You, we don't, we never call the color a person, right? It's the color of a person. So if you just focus on the color, and gets more deep understanding, we find that we are not seeing anyone, we are just seeing color. So that color cannot be called a person. So that's a way to get out of the self-view. Okay, right, the time is up, I think. Okay. So we conclude the class. Thank you for listening. Today we discussed about the Chakku Pasada. I'll try my best to give the hand out next week. <laughs> Sorry for, uh, I was unable to give you two weeks. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the lecture and uh, got some insights about the Chakku Pasada. So, wish you all the best and may, may this merit helps you to help us to attain the Nibbana and also helps the Sasana to sustain. Buddha Sasana Chirantitatu, Buddha Sasana Chirantitatu, Buddha Sasana Chirantitatu, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu.